The next filter that I'm going to demonstrate is the echo filter. Now, to show off the echo filter in the easiest way I can, I'm actually going to swap out our sound. In the previous video, uh, we were listening to Chopin's Nocturne 9, so I'm going to switch this over to beep delay once more. So we get a much more basic sound, but it'll be a lot easier to hear the distinct echoes if we just switch back over to a simple beep. So if I hit play just to reacquaint you with a sound, here's what we have. Just an ongoing beep. So I'm going to go to component, jump down to audio, and drop on an echo filter, which does exactly what you think it does. It just adds an echo. It has a few properties, which are pretty basic. We have a delay. This is how long in milliseconds it's going to take for the sound to get back to you. Uh, then we have the decay ratio. Now, what this is going to do is control how much decay each echo has. Like, how much of the overall sound are you going to lose each time the sound bounces off a theoretical surface and comes back to you? So, in this case, with it set to 0.5, each echo is 50% as loud as the sound that came before it. So the first echo will be half as loud as the original sound, the next will be a quarter, and so on and so on. Now we have wet mix and dry mix. Now if you're unfamiliar with working with audio, then those will probably make no sense to you at first. What wet mix is, is the sound of the echo itself. And then dry mix is your original sound. And you can use these kind of like a mixer to control how much of each uh, of each part you want to hear. So let's just go ahead and hit play and hear what we get. Now I'm going to point this at the boom box and click on the inspector. I'm going to turn down our volume quite a bit for a moment because that's really distracting. What we've got going on here is the timing of the echo delay is just such that it's a little hard to tell each distinct uh, aspect. So let's pull this down to like 100 and I'll turn my sound back up. And that's a, a lot more echo-like. It's almost got a, a sonar-like sound to it. So l I'm going to take that and probably extend it. Let's try 120. There we go. So now we can hear each individual distinct echo coming at us. If we pull our decay ratio down to zero, all we're hearing is that first echo, and that's that's it. As we start to push this up, our echoes will last forever, and they will just stack on top of each other, so watch out for that sort of thing. Next we have, let me set that back to, say, 0.5. Wet mix and dry mix, as I mentioned a second ago, allow you to control how much of the echo sounds versus the original sounds you'd like to listen to. So listen very closely as I pull down the wet mix. The echoes are actually going to go away. And now we're right back to just the original sound and nothing else. As I start to bring these back up to one, which is 100% volume, we start to catch a little bit of that echo. So you can have it really subtle. You could say set this at like 0 0.05, and you have to, uh, just a subtle amount of echo being applied. Your dry mix is how much of the original sound you want to hear. If you set this to zero, you don't hear the original sound at all. All you hear is the echoes. And with our echoes being really soft, you can hardly hear them at all. And that's really all there is to it. It's just a way to control how much of the original sound versus the echo sound that you hear. And that's it. The, it's a, a very simple filter, and if you just need a basic echo to play with on this one sound, that's how you can do it. Now, keep in mind, you can apply this directly to an existing sound or to your audio listener, and it'll echo all incoming sound effects. Just want to make sure you remember that from our intro. But that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.